What's going on, Bulls Nation? And welcome in to another live episode of the CHGO Bulls Podcast, presented to you by PointsBet. Don't forget that promo code CHGO when you sign up to live your bet life. Hello. I'm Peck. You can follow me on Twitter at Bulls underscore Peck. That's Big Dave. He's on Twitter at Bow, BWL Sports. Bow. Will the Thrill is at Won't God Leave on Twitter. And joining us once again today, this time in person, <laughs> our guy, CHO intern Kyle Williams. You can follow him on Twitter at K underscore Williams Media. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? <laughs> you happy today? You're in a good mood. Y'all. I got questions. What's your question? Well, first, do, do your thing first. My weekend started right now. Yeah. Do your thing, man. Oh. oh. Yeah, how'd that feel? I am already on that plane. Yes, you are. Mm. You're done. Mm. First of all, I like how you refer to yourself by last name only now. I, I like that's it. how everyone. That's what everybody else calls me. Just say I'm Peck. What and up, everybody's Peck? gonna know. What up, Peck? Plus, what it is like Peck's pretty common last name. Yeah, it's not as common as Matt. Like a <laughs> billion Matts in the world. It's true, it's true. Only several Pecks. And you know you are pecked. But tell them why you're ready. Tell them why you're so chill. So. This is a pre-vacation beer. Because mm-hmm. uh, in my brain, I'm already on vacation. Correct. Uh, I'm here. We're going to talk about the Bulls or whatever. Right. I'm going straight from here to Midway, mm-hmm. hopping on a jet plane, mm-hmm. down to Tejas mm-hmm. to see my sister, my brother-in-law, and most importantly, my two adorable nieces. EJ and Rory, Matt's on the way! I think Joey approves of Texas. Some the tells the real here. reason is because tomorrow we're going to talk about the LeVar Ball thing. <laughs> and That's a real reason. <laughs> Matt just wants nothing to do with that, so we're going to save that one for tomorrow. They were like, That's let's right. talk about that today. I was like, nope. He did have no Not desire. doing it. And guess what? Mark K's not going to want to do it either. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. Mark, if you're watching, just I'm sorry. You right under that Apologize bus there, Mark. Oh, advance. the biggest bus has been. <laughs> the Sea Red bus. Geared up to run Mark oh, over tomorrow. Oh, yes, man. <laughs> Summertime Peck is always in effect. Here true. he is, ladies and gentlemen. At least I have partial sleeves today. <laughs> this is true. Yeah. How many tank tops do you have? Like, uh, my back. My, so my what I packed to go to Texas for four days is a pair of shorts, a bathing suit, four tank tops. Uh, underwear that's it end of packing Bean. single man <laughs> single man right here it's that is 97 degrees down there damn what do i need real clothes for that's a good point can't argue that and sunglasses i'm assuming oh two pairs two pairs <laughs> i'm a pair and then a backup pair <laughs> he's ready the exact same pair i'm, I'm very happy it's a, it's a cheap terrible pair of napa auto parts sunglasses i saw those glasses I get for free from my buddy but they look really nice though oh my gosh they look really cool on they're you, fantastic man. they do they look really they're cool they're like faux you. wood but they look yeah. they look nice they're good move. are you a sunglasses guy big time yeah big time burks and sunglasses baby really <laughs> that's the life i gotta see this kyle you i i need to we gotta get most importantly we need man. to know what kyle's summertime footwear of choice is good question what is it uh summertime footwear of choice probably some air force ones white air force Mm, ones wow can't go wrong with those it's going crazy out there not mad at that at all i'm rocking my low top shy town air force ones right now it's true you got your own man but like don't your feet and your toes get all hot and trapped no no all right (laughs) man Suit Man. yourself, I guess. You know, yeah, you put on that, you put on some slides, and you, you move on. <laughs> Socks and slides is how I roll, man. Socks and yes. slides. Socks and slides is Socks how it stocks. is, man. Socks and stocks. Socks and stocks. Okay. Socks and slides. Barefoot. Socks and slides. Air Force Ones. You, okay. you are a communist if you wear <laughs> socks with slides. <laughs> Oh, uh, you got to hang around more people, man. <laughs> you got to, bro. I got to get you around more people. Wait, is that not, that's not normal? I got yeah, it. You, you hear what I'm saying? He got to yeah. hang around more people. I'm trying to, you feel what I'm saying, Kyle? He got to hang around socks more. Socks with slides. That's all we do, right? That's how we roll. Socks Nonsense. with slides, man. Nonsense. Got to hang around more people, bro. Uh, I got you. Don't okay. Worry. All right, we we ready to do some grades? No. So we're we're ball. getting close to the end of our player evaluations oh. for our postseason. Clap it up for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Will is thrilled that we're almost done with these. Will books. is thrilled. We're doubling up today. We're going to do Javante. We're going to do Derrick Jones Jr. Uh, and then with whatever time we have left, we'll uh, we'll talk about that uh, okay. Warriors beatdown in Game One last night. <laughs> Woo! Um, all right, so let's start with Javante. Okay. Who? Uh, wow. Talk about outperforming what I would say the average Bulls fan expected of him this season yeah. because he was needed mm. um, with Patrick Williams going down with that broken wrist just five games into the season. Mm. All of a sudden, Javante comes into the starting lineup, ends up starting lots of games for the Bulls this season. Yeah. And uh, let's take a look at them grades. Joey, there they are. So uh, we're, we're pretty uh, pretty close to lockstep here. I gave mm. him a B-minus, Dave. You a C-plus and... Mm. 
Uh, Will, with a, just a solid, strong B. Mm. Um, I, I kind of looked at the fact that even though he went cold, like pretty much everyone in the Bulls jersey went cold towards the end of the season, he shot the best in his career behind the three-point line. Wow. Um, and, like, between that and just causing some, you know, uh, havoc whenever there are, like, loose ball scenarios, he somehow ended up being a guy in the right place at the right time. I feel like he generated a, a good good amount of second chance opportunities, second yeah. possessions for the Bulls True. with his hustle on the offensive end. And that's that's kind of where I ended up with my being behind this for a guy you didn't really expect to be a big contributor mm-hmm. on the offensive end. Yeah, I, I mean, first, I think we all agree Javante was amazing. Like, what he did for the Bulls this season was incredible. Coming in, playing the four, which I think everybody kind of chuckled at when we heard he was going to do that. He's six foot four. He's six, He's four. six <laughs> foot four. Four. That's, that's me size. <laughs> right. Me. I mean, I'm, I'm no starting power ball. forward for the Chicago Bulls. <laughs> Matt Mack. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, man. Like, we, we understand small ball, but that was ridiculous. So we heard it. Sure. And not only did he perform well at it, I mean, he exceeded expectations at that position. That A position I, maybe all of us just had no idea he could even play. I don't know if he could, but he knows effort. So, but as far as his offense, I, was, I gave him that C. Uh, because he's not a guy I was like, okay, or C plus, I should say. He's not a guy I was like, he's going to create the shot. He's a guy I'm looking to to score. Whatever he put on the board was gravy. You know what I mean? Like, if he scored points, I'm like, oh, man, that's awesome. And Javante's – and sometimes when he scored points, I was like, wait, Javante's got 14? That's not good. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be like, oh, God, that means somebody's off. <laughs> oh, that's not good. So that's kind of why I gave him the C plus. Uh, the dunks he had were amazing. The tip dunks he had were absolutely incredible. Like I was just, I'm always surprised that he could just jump that high. And why he's not in the dunk contest, I have no idea, man. He is built for that kind Too of thing. Too extreme bounce. Come on, man. Yeah. It's, it's his Twitter handle, for God's sake. So he should be in the dunk contest. But, yeah. He was solid. Like you said, he shot better from three. He wasn't great at it, but yeah, you said it was like his 35, career 36 percent. That's not terrible. It's not Take terrible that. at all, man. That's not terrible at all. But he was solid. He was solid. And I think a C plus for what he did for the Bulls was a solid thing. It kind of reminds me of the IO situation we were talking about where he stepped up into this like injury resulted in opportunity for him. And he yeah. stepped up and filled this role in an awesome way. But he's 28. I mean, he's had five years in his career where he wasn't really playing, wasn't True. contributing at all. And then all of a sudden he was like a 24 a night, 24 minutes a night, yeah, yeah. 24 points. I don't want to <laughs> confuse anybody <laughs> there, but uh, I just, I mean, I totally agree with you guys. The, the activity um, cutting, I think was another big thing for him. Yeah. And I was like pulling up some offensive numbers for him. Oh yes. Uh, which, you know, I do. Yes, sir. Um, and for offense, he was all around like zero, which is, which is average. Um, he was in the 97th percentile in points per shot attempt from cleaning the glass, 91st percentile in true shooting. So uh, mm. he was kind of an advanced stats darling. But for me, it was just like stepping up, uh, being an unlikely contributor, and really filling a role that the Bulls needed in terms of 3 and D, being able to, we can get into the defense, but guard up sure. positions and just being a play finisher on low usage. Yeah. Uh, and Kyle, we threw you into the loop kind of last second today. Uh, so your grades aren't up there on that graphic. But if you were to give uh, Javante a grade for his offensive season, what would, what would it be? I'd give him a B. I mean, he stepped into a role that he probably wasn't expecting to at the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. And he's he, he performed admirably. He was mm-hmm. a finisher. He knocked down a three at around a league average clip. He's just one of those guys you need on your team. He's He's going to always come up with a loose ball. He's going to fight for rebounds, fight for positioning. He's just one of those guys that you're going to need. And, I mean, I don't know if he's a a 24-minute-a-night guy, but Mm -hmm. he's a guy you want on your team. And he, you need those guys that are going to just do the dirty work and finish play strong. And it's just at a lower minute rate. And I think – you, the Bulls have something. The Bulls have something. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that Mark and I talked a lot about at Bulls HQ, and then even as we started at CHGO, as just when Patrick comes back, him sliding back down into that 16 to 20 minute a night mm-hmm. kind of yeah. player, and really being able to like contribute at a super high level in that role. Mm-hmm. I think he was stretched a little bit thin, um, just having to play starters minutes, but. I was really impressed with what I saw from him this year. Yeah, he was he was something else, man. Like, you know, the first thing that pops in my head is when we first saw him make his debut, you know, mm-hmm. at the power forward position was in, like, preseason. 
And yeah, Billy went to him went to really early, like without question. You know what I mean? He was like, no, it's going to be him. And then he started playing well. Because there still wasn't like, a lot yeah. of certainty around P-Dub's readiness Correct. from the inj- the ankle injury that he was dealing with in training exactly. camp and then into preseason. Exactly. So we were like, okay, he's going to get some run in, right. you know, and then he'll get back in. And then I, I just remember the game they played Cleveland where he was just eating Larry Marketing for lunch. He mm. dunked on him. Like, he just uh, just went straight up on him and, and right. put one down on a seven-footer. And I'm like, I just – I was like, does this mean he's good or Lori's right. bad? Like, I couldn't yes, figure that yes, part out. Yes, <laughs> and yes. And I, I, I've joked about it before, but, you know, I have a Lowry jersey in that the initial, the first ever city edition, yeah, the remember. white with the blue Chicago yeah. cursive. And I've joked about, oh, you all just taped, you know, Javante's last name over Lowry's on that yeah. jersey. Like, so much so that maybe it's not taped, but, like, I need to, like, find somebody can, who's good at stitching and, like, remove Lowry's name and stitch in Javante's. Gray tape right there. Just put the gray tape on I'm the back. Classier than duct tape. Write it on there and move on, dog. No, the jersey's already tainted. No, don't <laughs> spend all that extra money on that. Just go buy a new jersey. Why would you get? What else stitching? do I spend money on other than bull stuff? Well, old style and Burks. Like, <laughs> yeah. Matt, <laughs> like, Matt rolled up to lunch yesterday wearing extreme. a Bulls jacket, a Bulls shirt, a Bulls hat, and I was just like, "This is <laughs> Dude, pick, this is." But, peak I mean, tell me, pick. I didn't look fresh as hell yesterday. Exactly. I never amazing. said that. Yeah, right. You absolutely <laughs> did. You absolutely did. I know that figure went up quick. Damn it! <laughs> I never said that. To Damn it! Me. Never, never came out of my mouth. This is like friend. when he accused me of hating on Joe Keem. Uh, <laughs> no, sir, I did not. <laughs> Uh, Colin in the comments said, I'm not kidding when I say we need a 7th, 8th, ninth man of the year awards or just mm. bench 1st and 2nd team. Mm. Javante yeah. would be all over I them. love that. Yeah. No, I you're right. That. Except for the part where he started four games and he came off the bench this year. He was such a uh, – it makes you, your team is deep when yeah. you got a Javante Green on it. You know what I mean? It's such a deep basketball team. And you were right, like when you and Marquette were saying he could slide back until those 16 to 20 minutes a game because that's what I was – when we would talk, I kept asking that question. Like, is he more comfortable coming off the bench than he is starting? Only because I know his contribution, what it would be as far as the energy it provides, you know what I'm saying, and the explosiveness. Like, you need that kind of stuff coming off the bench. You know what I mean? I didn't – it's good, good to have him in the starting lineup, but it felt like this – how long can I get away with this kind yeah. of thing? You know, how long can his, I steal money before I get caught kind of thing? Yeah, you know? it's not his, like, go-to role. And I think, you know, transitioning into defense here, like, that is something uh, against Giannis especially where his size and just the ability to, like, really get into his airspace, uh, it, to me, strikes me as more of, like, a curveball as opposed to, like, mm. a fastball that you're just going in with every time. Right. Like, to be able right. to pull him off the bench – uh, you know, give Giannis a few possessions of just like, what am I doing with this guy before he figures it out? I think he's he's a great kind of player in that role. Yeah, struggles with little guys. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, the comments, I see you. We're not talking about it today. Tune in. These guys will talk about it tomorrow. <laughs> ah, they want it. They want it, man. <laughs> Don't listen to anything that man says. Ah. And get it out of my comments. Uh, all Never right. Lost. Moving on. Defense. Real simple for me as far as grading Javante's season defensively. I mean, not that kind of A elite level defense that we saw from Caruso and Lonzo Ball. He does have some slip ups here and there. Yeah. But as you were just talking about with the way that he was asked to guard at the power forward position, you know, guarding guys half a foot, two thirds of a foot taller than him, I think he did a commendable job. And one of the greatest things from the entire season, as far as this being a fun Bull season, was anytime he did something where you blinked. And all of a sudden, the Bulls have the ball and are going the other way, and yeah. Stacey King's yelling out five Javantes. Yeah. Like, that yeah. was a beautiful piece of what this Bulls season was, was five Javantes on defense. Yeah, he was great at getting those steals that disrupted, just, just these disruptive steals kind of thing. Like, whatever the flow they were trying to do, he's just inbounding the ball. You know, he would get that steal. When they're uh, trying to set up in their half-court offense, he's coming and getting that steal. You know what I mean? When they get a rebound and trying to run a break, he'll take the ball from you. You know what I mean? Like, it was those kind of disruptive steals that he would get that would lead to those easy buckets for the Bulls. You saw a lot of it early on. You didn't see a lot of it later um, because you didn't see a lot from anything, anybody a little later and things like that. But you saw a lot of that early on from him. But I I gave him a C uh, for that reason. Like, I like what he did in that sense, but he wasn't a defensive, like, stalwart like uh, Javante shutting this dude down. And, again, a lot of that had to do because he was playing the four. You know what I mean? I'm not expecting him to shut down Giannis or, or things like that. Just get in his way, use them six fouls, give him some fits, get back out on the break. The, another thing he contributed well on was the def- uh, rebounding. 
he was a pest, you know, when it came to that. Uh, if, even if he didn't get the rebound, he was in there fighting for that ball, man. You had to account for him when you were battling and trying to box somebody out, you know, and get that ball that way. So, again, he was solid, you know what I mean? That's why I gave him a C because, that, for me, that's, that's a solid grade. It's interesting, yeah. though. Big gap. You and I both can be pluses, Will, and, and Dave with the C. Yeah. So, Will, what, what are your thoughts? Another situation where I think the advanced stats just really liked him, um, I think he's definitely limited in the sense that, uh, you know, he's not he's not the kind of versatile defender that Caruso is where he can right. really guard on the ball and then also switch one through five right. and also just kind of quarterback the defense off the ball. Like, he was really good guarding bigger players. Um, that was kind of like his niche, and he did it really well. Uh, stole the ball at a really high rate. Uh, the Bulls performed well with him on the, on the floor. So um, just in terms of what they needed and what they got, really, really impressed with him defensively. Again, I think it's a situation where he's probably better in a little bit of a smaller role, but the fact that he performed and really outperformed what you, know, you expected from him in that bigger role, I think, mm. uh, earned a higher grade for me. Mm. Kyle? I would give him a kind of a B minus. Mm -hmm. um, like both of you guys made great points, and like Dave, like you said, he wasn't a stopper by any means, but he was just a very gritty and like he he was gonna fight. I feel to me that was his biggest attribute. It's like mm -hmm. he's going to be, he's gonna fight, he's gonna bother opposing players. Um, like Will said, particularly bigger players, he has a, a better chance at guarding, but. He's not Caruso, which isn't a slight. He's not one of those, like... No, he is not the best yeah. defender in the NBA. <laughs> He's not one of those switchy That's type okay. guys. But, you know, it, he, there's value there, and I'm curious to see how he plays next year, presumably when he does have to play large minutes and mm. see how he is when he's, you know, 16 minutes spent here and right. see how he defends for longer, like, for those stretches instead of, you know, playing 30-plus minutes and starting a obscene amount of games just due to injury and COVID. Right. That's a good point. And, and I'd like to see him against those second units also because I really think he's got first unit talent. He showed he has that first unit talent, but putting that against those guys in the second unit, he could really be a pest and a problem. And I think that's going to really just make that transition, those transition buckets the Bulls get. That could really be a big thing for them. I'm going back to the uh, baseball analogy well, but he Let's he's like a uh, – a really strong middle relief pitcher oh, where he can come in for I a like few it. innings I like uh, and maybe give you a spot start here and there. He's not going to like be a rolled as Chapman throwing 105 mm -hmm. at the end of the game, um, but just super solid. And they absolutely needed that. They yeah. just really, especially in sort of a year where you didn't get quite as much from Pat as you wanted, where he's really that primary for the future. Um, he was, he was a great stopgap. That's true. Everybody need relief pitching, man. Innings eater. Got to have Dude. it. Yeah. Got to have it. Got to have it. Man. I was about to ask you what's wrong with your socks. We don't have time. We don't uh, <laughs> have time. No, All right. Let's go straight is, into is the meat right here. Uh, Joey, time. pop that uh, graphic back up. Uh, I like how we, you guys were like, oh, I filled these Javante grades out a while ago, and I was struggling to remember what mine were. <laughs> um, Will, I feel like yours is fairly self-explanatory. Yeah, I saw yours, Matt, and I was like, okay, I have no idea. So when you say you have it, Joey, what you meant is you have two thirds of it. <laughs> six foot four, guarding seven footers, you angel. <laughs> guarding seven footers, you angel. You angel. I love how, you forever. How you angel. Bless you, you angel. Yes. Six foot four, guarding seven footers. But uh, yeah, Wills is. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> For one, that's his nickname. Yes. Woo. True. And I think it's very appropriate because he makes some plays where it's just like, ooh, yeah, yeah. just yeah. so athletic. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he was super exciting. And I just, yeah, I went with that. I think I was getting kind of out there with some of my other ones, <laughs> trying to try like, to rein him back in on nice today's meathead. <laughs> I do love that that's his nickname though, because it brings back what, like I loved Taji Wu. Like, it wasn't move, as yeah. viral as some of the other nicknames or some of the other players from back in that team's, you know, heyday. Yeah. But Taj's teammates called him Taji Wu all the time. They did. And I love it. They so did. I love that we got another Wu back in a Bulls jersey. By, ta by Taj's teammates, he means Joe Kim Noah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. That's all he's talking about. That's right. But does anybody know mine? Like, you all guess mine here. Uh, three as fuck money sign. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Joey, Joey. 
<laughs> it is three. He's a three away from cash. Oh, and what I mean uh, by that is he, he has a three point. You said he shot that high clip from three or thirty five. He's a thirty eight percent three point shooter. That dude is going to get paid. For the first half, he was. Yes. Yeah. And you saw how valuable he was. I think he shot like 46 or something percent on corner threes in the first half yeah, of the year. Yeah, unbelievable. If that's his consistency, because he didn't do that in the second half, but you're right. But if that's his consistency and he consistently has that in his game, he is going to play a very long time and have a deep, deep check in the NBA, man. Because everything else he brings, teams need. You need the energy. You need the intangibles. You need the ball IQ. You need the guy jumping out the gym, the guy who can defend basically four positions. You know what I'm saying? You need all that stuff. But then I can depend on you to hit a wide-open three-point shot or even a contested one. Dude, that's P.J. Tucker. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? All day long. You know what I mean? Like, that's a, that's a check. You know what I mean? And P.J. Tucker got paid all the mm -hmm. time, and he's still in this league contributing. He can definitely be that guy. He's a three away from cash. One more on this is that I've said this in the past about Caruso. Uh, I, I have been slightly critical of AK for missing on some of the margin moves. Mm -hmm. This was a home run on the yeah. margins. Throw in in right. the Daniel Gafford trade. Yeah. Uh, turns out to be a big time, like, top six player contributor on the Bulls all season long. So he was awesome. And it's a situation where you get a guy like that who can play 24 minutes a night for a million five. And that allows you to build out your roster and yeah. go all in on some of the, the bigger name players. That's true. Yeah. Um, Wait, Kyle, do you have me head great for him? I, I, I can't think of one. Can't right think now. Of one out you can just talk That's anything. Not on the spot. It's anything, man. Well, if, if you saw his game and you would just, you know, forget, you know, the offense and defense, how did he make you feel? You know what I'm saying? When you would watch him play, like how did he make you feel? Like what, what was the meathead thing that came out of you when you saw him, man? I was, sheesh, because <laughs> there it the is. Pout. That's your great. <laughs> that's your great. Boom. Sheesh. That boy worked hard. He there it is. Hard. <laughs> and that's how it's done, Kyle. Congratulations, sir. Meathead grades on the spot. Sheesh. Uh, boy works. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> looking awesome. ahead to awesome. uh, Javante and this Bulls offseason. I saw somebody in the comments calling Javante a gem, and then somebody said he's not just a gem, he's a diamond because of what the Bulls are paying him next season. You just mentioned it, Will. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe, you want to throw up Javante's uh, offseason projection there? Second year of a two-year deal that he signed with the Bulls uh, after last season concluded, 1.8. Mm. That guy, in all the different ways he proved to be useful this year, getting 1.8 is going to be a humongous help for a Bulls team that's yeah. going to have to do some – Pretty tiptoey kind of stuff yes. around the margins yeah. to, uh, to improve this roster next season. So I don't see why they would get rid of him or no. include him in a trade or cut him to re up a roster spot. To me, mm. team roll. Five Javantes. You need a guy like that on your team. Um, and, and as you were saying with your meathead grade, Dave, that's what I put for area to improve. If he can go from 34, 35 mm. to like – flirting with closer to 40% three-point shooter, Boy. especially in the corners, mm. in addition to what he does on the defensive end, Beast. that is a hell of a player that you're paying less than two mil. Yeah. I think the coming back 95% is completely accurate um, because I don't see him being traded, but that's not to say if something comes up and we could get a big guy, he wouldn't be involved in that. You're like, right. yeah, I, you can involve him in that. Um, yeah, like his role on the team, like to do everything, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. do it all. Like it's like five Caruso's, you know what yeah. I mean? It's like you know, five Javante's out there doing it all. And the athleticism is what really brings it home for him. You know what I mean? That's what really makes him valuable in my opinion. It's, it's the defense and all those things cool, but that athleticism, because you can't really, you know what I'm saying, a uh, uh, game plan for some, somebody who's going to jump over you. You know what I'm saying? It just dunk all over your head. So, yeah, I can't wait to see him next year, man. Yeah, um, the Bulls, after they pay, hopefully pay Zach Levine, they're not going to be outside this summer. They don't have any money to spend. <laughs> and it rem Javante, he, it's not a one-for-one -one comparison, but in terms of role and importance to the team, he reminds me of Gary Payton Jr., uh, the second on uh, mm -hmm. the Golden, Golden State, State. Yeah, wow. And just, like, you see how how their defense is still really good, but how they're missing, like, that ball pressure guy that, mm -hmm. that Gary Payton was. And yeah. just his athleticism and just ability to do all of these – High flying acrobatic dunks or rebounds in traffic, despite not being like a behemoth. He's you know a regular sized guard. Right. Javante Green's a six foot, like you guys said, six foot four power forward. Right. And <laughs> so for him to do all the things that he's able to do, mm -hmm. you notice it when he's not there. 
And I think he needs to be on this team next year. And if every if AK and if they retool the margins mm-hmm. and he's your seventh, eighth, ninth guy off the bench, then you have the buildings of a really good team. Very true. Very uh, in the comments, C Red UK, shout out to them, said AK pretended to want Daniel Tice to get Javante. Yeah. I, I agree. Like, I think low key that Javante was the part of that trade that they really wanted. He kept saying that too. Because, yeah. you know, and yeah. Tice got some, you know, more minutes when they first arrived at the end of, you know, the 21, 2021 season. But. Then in the offseason, it was like, are we really going to pay Daniel Tice to stay here? Yeah. And like, we, you know, we got to figure out what we're doing with our front court pieces. But no, they, you know, they execute a sign and trade to send him to Houston, which now, by the way, they still have the trade exception in their back pocket from Ship and Tice to Houston. Mm-hmm. And Javante was the piece that they wanted cheaper than Tice. Yes, he was. And did more for the Bulls than Tice did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Shout out Daniel Tice, though. He was Dude, nice. back in Boston, yeah. where he, he belongs. Yeah. Yes, yes. Doing it Just right. Just not here. Just not here. <laughs> I, 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 got a, I got some love for Daniel Tice in my columns dropping tomorrow. Oh. I mean, come on. How can I not love the guy? Trademark. Tats. Rebounding. Fair point. Hello, Dennis. Fair point. He's right. Uh, all Weird right. Weird number. Yeah. So we got to <laughs> move on to Derek Jones Jr. next. But before that, Big Dave. Yes. Hit the people with the points bet. Oh, I shall. Because the best way to support CHGO is to download that points bet app and use that code CHGO when you sign up. Because if you do that right now, you'll get two Uno Dos. Two risk-free bets up to $2,000. I'm not saying that in Spanish. But that's not it. If you make a $50 or more first-time deposit, you'll receive a free CHGO membership, which unlocks all of that awesome web content, and you'll even get a free T-shirt of your choice. Oh, my God. Those T-shirts are so ill. They are so dope. That's 2,000 in free bets, a free CHGO membership, a free T-shirt from the CHGO Laja, all for making a $50 or more first-time deposit at PointsBet. And... Also, introducing that live NBA same game parlay for the first time ever. You can build that perfect live NBA same game parlay, and you can do that only with points bet. Dramatic balls. Oh, you can mine your favorite bets anytime during the game. And if you want more. Oh, you can boost your live same game parlays. You can watch live, parlay live, boost live, and partay live with points bet. And all the people here in Illinois, in this beautiful state of Illinois, in this wonderful city of Chicago, where the weather, pretty solid. Don't hate it. Don't like it. Don't hate it, though. I'm right in the middle. I'm digging it. You can download that points bet app right now. Register your account from start to finish all from your phone. This thing right here. Right there. So what are you waiting for? Because once that game starts, you don't just bet. Thrillenium, what do we do? Thrillenium <laughs> lives his bet life. Oh, hey! tell me one time. Oh, I see. Cash only, eh? eh? No paper trail, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, I love that. Wow. Wait, has, has no one, seriously, has no one done that yet? I don't think anyone's done that yet. That is Joey, brilliant. I think you're onto something here. Well, and dude, you know, at the NBA.com website, Fanatics, whatever, you can do you custom can do jerseys. Yes, you can. Don't give me the idea. This is Gold Fund Works Locker. Oh! Then you shouldn't have put it out. <laughs> oh, man, Joey. Well, that's that's But a then CHO. we got to wait for whoever makes our t shirts to make them. That's true. Ship them to us. Uh-huh. I don't got that kind of patience. <laughs> Although, not. also, you know what doesn't arrive in a hurry? What's that? Custom NBA jerseys. <laughs> they take six. Freaking months. That's true. Remember they how long I had to wait for my Patrick Williams one? He took a minute for that, man. And Just then, you ordered it two years ago. Got it yesterday. Yeah, and then you had to get another one because you got the number. because they got moved to the his trade. Number. Right, he had to right. switch his number. He had to flip okay. it. Man. It's a collector's item now. It is, man. I told you, you should never wear that thing again. You should have put it in a frame, man. Just put it up somewhere. I got to get Pete up to sign it first. Then I'll put it in a frame. Fair point. Come I on like now. Your thinking. I like your thinking. All right. I'll I'll go uh, I'll go to his twenty first birthday party coming up in a few months. I'll get him to sign it okay. then. I don't know. I don't like you hanging out with twenty one year olds though. You know, I Kyle will, is the only one I like. I will make with. sure he gets home safe and sound. <laughs> Oh, God. That has never been the case. Because I, I, I won't be in a mood to be partying myself because I won't be able to say anymore, Pete, I'm still only 20, y'all. You, you get around a 21-year-old who just turned 21. Kyle, don't hang out with him. You get around 21 who just turned 21. You are going to hand them all kinds of drinks, and you know it. That's going to be all the things that you're going to be on. Well, yeah, as, as opposed to what else do people usually get handed on their 21st birthday? Cat litter? Like, what are you talking about? I mean, you know, a handshake? You know what I'm saying? Some money? Your gift? 
You don't have to hand them drinks all the time. Gift. <laughs> Gift. <laughs> the deliciousness of old style. There's a perfect 21st birthday present. Oh, man. Kyle, just, just stay away. It's all I can tell Although you. I want Pete up in good shape, so I'd have to... He, like he should, if he wants to imbibe, he should pick something with a little fewer calories than okay. a full calorie beer. So the 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 Jimmy Butler beer. He no, don't drink that. Okay, that's gross. Right. <laughs> Dude, I, you like the Jimmy Butler beer? I mean, you're a Jimmy Butler fan. I do love Jimmy. I don't know about the beer though. What, what is he drinking? Again? He's peddling Michelob Ultra. Oh, Michelob I thought Ultra. you meant like a Jimmy branded beer. No, 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 no. He's got no, his own coffee, yeah. but he doesn't have his own beer. He just yeah. peddles Michelob Ultra. I haven't tried the coffee Ultra. either though. Okay, well, maybe we need another sponsor. Uh, Big Face Coffee. Jimmy. Come on with it, man. I'm I'm down. Kyle's down. We Uh, we already have Strava Craft Coffee, you guys. That's true. They should combine They should collab. Collab. I like it. I don't need it. You don't need it? No. (laughs) No Jimmy? Stay down there in Miami. No Jimmy Odom. Okay. Your all white outfits and your weird hats (laughs) and your whatever they do down in Miami. Big Willie style. Um, (laughs) All right, guys. Let's talk about Derek Jones Jr. real quick. Um Decent chance that this this guy's not going to be around next season, I would guess, as far as what the Bulls have to spend, what he might command on the free agent market. Arrived in the sign-in trade of Lowry Markkinen going to Cleveland. Mm-hmm. Um, some people were maybe hoping for Larry Nance. It ends up being Derek Jones Jr., and people were maybe speculating that one of the reasons it was DJJ and not Nance is because DJJ was on an expiring deal, whereas Nance's contract had more remaining years on it. Right. Um, kind of an up and down year for Derek. Uh, Joe, you want to throw Derek's grades up there when you get a second? Um, so look at that. All three of us, or no, I, so I gave him a, a flat C. You guys both gave him a C minus. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I maybe gave him a C instead of a C minus just for that one Frogger style dunk he had mm-hmm. flying down the middle of the paint. Yeah, that was fun. It was. Also, I bumped line. him up a little bit because he came back. After the initial six to eight, hashtag six to eight weeks, right? Mm, yes. With that uh, hand injury. Mm. And was like, man, this team really could use me right now. This team could use a body right now. A body. And yeah. he before letting his finger fully heal, just splinted him, two of them together, taped two of them together, whatever, and got himself back out there. Um, but it's harder to give him anything other than a C because of that stat that you loved so much, Big Dave, which was, wait, okay, so we're out of the All-Star break, and how long has it been since Derek hit a three? <laughs> long time. Since forever? A <laughs> long time. Again, kind of like Javante, not a guy you were expecting a lot out of on the right. offensive end. Correct. But just sort of like everything about DJJ's season screamed C to me. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, the offense, the reason he even got that C-minus, you're right, Matt, was those two dunks. It was the Frogger dunk he did that I watched over again, and then the uh, dunk on Giannis in which I attacked and almost broke uh, Joey's chest, hugging him so yeah. hard. <laughs> so that's why I was so – that's why I'm like, he gets this C-minus, you know, for those reasons because that was excitement, you know. And you're right, that three-point shot he had, he was 40% from three in the first half Drilled of the him. season, man. Like for and again, he was hitting him from the baseline, you know, same as Javante. And I was like, wow, why was this dude on the bench? Like he couldn't even get in the game. Like, why was he on the bench? And then the second half of the season started, like, oh, <laughs> he's not supposed to do that. Okay. But shout out to him, man, for playing like he did and contributing like he did, especially in the first half of the year. Because they needed it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They needed his help. I think Again, one of those situations where I wish I had done these grades a little later. Mm-hmm. I did. I feel like I pulled all these out a week ago, and now I'm <laughs> regretting my decisions. But I think he was a little bit better. I think he okay. probably would go with like a C plus at okay. this point. Um, having some time to think about it, I don't think he was really put in the best position to succeed. We saw him in the first half of the season be sort of the five yeah. and play make out of the short roll. Mm-hmm. Um, he was obviously shooting much better as you said, but uh, I think he was, I mean, he was disappointing, but I think a lot of it had to do with the finger and just like coming back, not looking like himself, but he fell out of the rotation. Billy didn't play him. And it was just kind of like a very weird season for him Yeah, where they really needed a guy to step up in that four backup five role. He's primed to do that. You get him in the Lowry trade. um, And it just, it felt like he wasn't, good enough to to be what they needed him to be so Mm. definitely below uh a b for me but i think he was probably a little bit better than a c minus so okay maybe c or c plus that's fair kyle i'd go with a c plus um it was an up and down year like will mentioned 
He shot 39% on corner threes mm-hmm. this year, which is an encouraging sign for a player like him, you know, a role player, just hit the corner threes. The corner threes would get you paid. Yes. PJ Tucker will tell you that. <laughs> and if he could just hit the corner threes more, I mean, he, he just needs to be more consistent because it was by far the, his career high in terms of percentage of three point uh, three pointers in the corner made. Mm-hmm. He just needs to, to just continue to work on that, be more of a play finisher because he's not really a, much of a creator with the ball in his hands and be a, a tougher rebounder. Mm. That would also help. Like if he has some Javante in him, I think mm. that would really help. But mm. like right now, the idea of Derrick Jones Jr. is better than the actual player. Mm. And Bars. it's I, that might be tough to say, but it's just – he, he has unlimited bounds. He's, there's yeah. no reason he shouldn't be a guy who could, you know, take some back up four minutes, back up five minutes. And Billy Donovan, his not trusting him to play him kind of speaks volume. Yeah, yeah I think his, his decision-making and awareness wasn't – held him back, yeah. honestly. Correct. Um, Correct. But he's only 25. Like, he's wow. super young still. Spring chicken. Um, he, I mean, has all the tools in the world and – yeah, you want to see him be able to put it together in a season where, like I said, they just needed somebody in that yeah. backup four or five role. I think he's a five. He showed some flashes, but just not quite enough to really get it done. Yeah, true indeed. Yeah, uh, and, and shifting to, to defense, like I, I think that's where my expectations were maybe a little higher, mm-hmm. and I feel he f- fell short. I wanted Derek to be a better and more versatile defender mm-hmm. uh, than the product that we got this season. Um the the thing in particular to me was anytime it seemed like the Bulls were, you know, nine tenths of the way through a really good defensive possession, mm-hmm. it ended with Derrick Jones Jr. committing a bad foul, yes. and it drove me yes. crazy. My God, and yes. I went and looked. So you know, he didn't play a whole lot of minutes per game this season. Per thirty six, you know how many fouls he committed this season? Seven. Four and a half. Jesus. Per thirty six, <laughs> four and a half. Like that's Derek. You're flirting with Chris Dunn territory. <laughs> yeah, right man, there. Seriously, yeah. But I mean, it, like, he—it seems like he has a lot of the tools that go into building a good NBA defender. Right. He's got length. I think his footwork and you know his his quickness laterally is okay. Mm-hmm. But it's just the bad fouls, the dumb fouls, the unnecessary fouls that yeah. drag his defense it's down. The awareness. What? Yeah. It's just like his awareness and his yeah. like understanding of the game, where to be, when to be there. To me, it was another situation where I think he wasn't really utilized in a role that made the most sense for him. Whereas I think he's a five on offense. I think he's better at guarding smaller on the perimeter mm-hmm. than having to go up against Giannis, which no we question. saw in the playoffs. No so question. his length and I, I think his ability to move his feet can really bother guards. Um, but I don't think he's like got the sturdiness, the ability to like push bigger guys off the block. And so it's kind of like it's it's weird to have a guy who's a five on offense and a one or two on defense um, and, and find that role for him. But I think you have to, you know, take that's on him to a certain extent to right. not really be able to figure that out. Like, yeah, no, I, I agree. Go ahead. Kyle. I was just going to say, like. Is he's in that weird spot where, like you said, five on um, on defense. And, well, he's a five on def. He's guarding. Five, excuse me, five on offense, mm-hmm. and then um, not a five on defense. And like it's weird when you have to find a role for those guys on offense mm-hmm. because, like Draymond, for example, he's guarding fives, mm-hmm. but he has the ball in his hands on offense, which helps his lack of you know shooting ability. Mm-hmm. But what do you do with Derrick Jones Jr. because teams are going to sag off of him where? At, Ever he is on the floor, I would as soon as he walks in the gym. <laughs> and you just have to, it's on him to kind of figure out that sweet spot where, where's his best role, where's his best fit in terms of the offense. And that's where I think him just being able to hit corner threes at a consistent, or enough that teams respect him. Yeah. Like PJ Tucker's hit him enough corner threes that teams respect him as a corner three specialist. Right. And it's his, I think he has so much potential just because of his athleticism and be able to meet guys at the rim or hound uh, smaller guards, smaller forwards. Mm-hmm. That's very helpful. And it's just the offensive part is just a big key, especially for a team without a shot blocker. He's a tough player to like plug into a system because he showed flashes as a passer in pick and roll, getting uh, like those dump off passes in short roll. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But like, you'd much rather have Vooch in that situation yes. making those plays. Yeah, every day. You can't really put him as a reliable spot-up shooter, so you got to put him in the dunker spot. 
and then he clogs up the space and there's not enough room for Damar and Zach to get in at their elbow spots. Um, so it's just like, it was kind of a clunky fit where he wasn't quite good enough to, to command like being used in a role where he made the most sense. Um, but I do think just the tools made and just the athleticism, his shot blocking, his timing, like he is a very solid defender. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why I went a little bit higher on the defensive side for him. But, uh, like I said, it's it's a tough fit. And I think the fact that Billy couldn't trust him should be counted against him. Yeah. And I think that's why I got, he got the D, uh, for me, pause. Um, but it was, I liked his help defense. You know what I'm saying? I liked his help. I liked his help defense. I did. He, he showed he showed that he could do that, and it was weird because he would show it more so when the offense was clicking, when everything was kind of going like that. He would show it that way. But, my God, when they, when they just would key in on him, you would just really be like, oh, my God, you're not good at defense. And then you're on a team where we needed more guys better at defense. Mm -hmm. He was being exposed. I didn't need another guy who, who needed to be exposed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I needed somebody who could be a stopgap for a second. You know what I mean? Just for a minute. You know what I mean? While, while Vooch gets some rest out there. Just give me a second. And he couldn't do that. As soon as he comes in, he's got two fouls. Yeah. Like, as soon as he walks in, two fouls immediately. The ref can't wait to call it. The whistle, like, just right there on his leg. Couldn't wait to blow that whistle on him, man. So, yeah, his defense definitely struggled because I remember I kept saying, why can't he play? Why can't he play? He Billy would not play him at all. And then I didn't know he could play five. You know what I mean? I, I didn't know it. And then I saw him at that five. I'm and then, like, yeah, you bring in Tristan, wow. and it's like, well, you can't put Derek there now because you just used this. Right. So, yeah, it was just like it was a weird spot. It was a weird for spot Derek. for him to be in. And even though it was weird, he didn't play great, you know, in that spot. He, he didn't do anything to, you know, endear himself, you know what I'm saying, to Billy Donovan or anything like that. So, yeah, he struggled. You know, I still thought he was solid. Like I said, with the help defense, some of those yeah. blocks he had. Mm -hmm. he used really good shot blocker. Yeah, he, he did a great job on that sense. But overall, though, no, it just, it just wasn't great. Uh, all right. Uh, meathead grades for Derek Jones Jr. Uh, Will, STN. <laughs> I the hell think is I, that? Can I guess yours first? Sure. <laughs> sure. You, you said that last time, Joey. Oh, my God, that dunk on Giannis. Correct. <laughs> that oh was pretty my God. easy. That dunk on Giannis was Because it nuts. was insane. And do you guys know this? I think Joey's going to pull up the vid of it. This was from the game on March 4th. Oh, yeah. Our first night. Our first show like here a, at CHGO so you almost on cracked launch Joey's day. Ribs. Like, I, I remember it. I remember it well, man. It was in. Incredible. It was an incredible dunk, man. I mean, and it, it was such a big game, too, you know. And I remember because because Jake, they kept trying to get us to leave, you know, to come watch the game with them at the bar. And Matt was like, yeah, we don't You do don't want to watch that. <laughs> it was like, we don't do that, bro. Like, we got to focus and watch this. because You're, we you're all going it. to the bar to be like, yay, we're done with launch day. And right, we're, like, out here, you know, like, <laughs> pulling our, hair our fingernails down to stubs, <laughs> stressing and sweating. Right, right. You know like what I'm crazy. saying? crazy. We were focused out here. And then that's when they realized, holy shit, we got to get a camera in there on those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Especially but, this one right here. So congrats to Will and Joey, who correctly yes, gets that. Great job. Because man. it is, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, OMG. T D O G. Unless yeah. it was something about O M G and then a T and then dog, I just realized that the word dog is in there. <laughs> but yes, it is. Oh my god! Oh my god! T dog. <laughs> oh, that's my Who's guy. T dog. Hey, T dog. <laughs> Derek Jones is apparently. Hey, Derek Jones is T dog. Uh, uh, mine mine was, uh, was, uh, while Joey's trying to pull up that vid, uh, uh, Dave, what is I B R? Anybody? Anybody? I B R? Uh, it's very simple. Something about bounce. Uh, <laughs> uh it's been real. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. been real, man. It's He's out of here, bro. Yeah, gone. It's been real. Gone. It's been real. It's a done deal. Uh, that money he got, that nine mil that he got, that, um, he's not going to get that again. You know what I'm saying? I hear it with the Bulls. Billy Donovan already showed you he's not a huge fan of him, you know, because he wouldn't play him all the time. And he gave us some awesome moments. He even said, I've never been on a team where, you know, that we're on the road, you know what I mean? And I can still hear Bulls fans. He said, I've never had that happen in my career. So I know he, he was great for the, for the Chicago Bulls and the fans and everything like that. And just how tough he was. I think that was one thing I found out about him was his toughness. Because him being out there with that finger, I just thought it was about to fall off his body. Like, every time he would just crouch down. Every single hand, time man. he was, like, holding his hand yeah, on the way man. back. Like, dude, he, he couldn't catch a break. I mean, we were all like, are you sure you should be right? Are you now? sure you should be? And he's like, no, I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like you're fine. 
But yeah, but I, thank you for being here. You know, I appreciated everything you did. But you know, it's been real, man. And wish him luck in his career. All right, Will. So what does STN mean? STN is should have taken Nance. Oh, oh, come on. Uh, yeah, that there, there are plenty head, of people. Taken that in, is meat head. That, there are plenty of people in the comments who agree with you. Like Colin who said, well, he's no Nance Jr. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but, but I mean, Derek was out of the rotation. In the playoffs, he got in the last couple of games when it was like clearly already determined that the Bulls were, that they were done. Yeah. He averaged four points, a rebound and a half, and shot 40% in 11 and a half minutes. Okay. Nance, in their six games against the Suns, played uh, 22 minutes, shot 56%, um, six rebounds, and nine points, and was, like, playing a really important role for them. Mm. Um, definitely the contract situation, like, I guess, but they're in a situation now where they've lost that cap spot, mm. where they probably should have just moved him at the deadline if they're not going to keep him, if they're not going to play him. Um, they should have just traded him and used that space to get somebody else for next year, get an asset for next year, or combine him with somebody else to upgrade at that position because obviously it just wasn't working at that point. Um, and they missed out on an opportunity to get a real contributor at a position where they really needed it. I mean, Nance's 6'10", like one of the few guys that you could put in front of Giannis and like try to slow him down. I mean, they really needed that guy. Mm. Um, and now they're, they're going to get rid of that roster spot, that $12 million for nothing, so they can stay under the tax. And it's just, it's upsetting. I would have rather had Nance. Oh, man. It, it does depend, though, what they end up doing with that Portland pick. Yeah, right. That conveys next year, and they're able to do something, or maybe they flip it. Mm. Um, but, yeah, I mean, right now it just kind of looks like they traded Lowry for a future pick that might not convey. Mm. Yeah. That was meathead right there, baby. I loved it. That was great, Will. That I'm was a meathead. Well, what can I say? That was great, man. That it is great. what it is. Moving on. <laughs> we have no Nance, and we're probably about to wave goodbye to Derek Jones Jr. Bye-bye. Um, because, yeah, as some people uh, in the comments were also pointing out, some team out there is probably going to give him more money than the Bulls want to give him. Yeah. And that's point. totally okay. That's fair. The idea is better than the actual player. It, he, mm. He's always going to have a home in this league until, that, until the athleticism goes. Fact. It was yeah. one of the – uh, that's a fact. Were the Bulls this year like one of the best dunking teams that you can think of? I, Zach, definitely Jones, during the Javante, peak. You I could mean, argue Lonzo God. throwing and finishing no. lobs. You could Zach seriously Russo. argue that they were the most athletic team in the league. And the layup lines, man. Uh, Colin yeah. in the comments said best Bulls yeah, dunk of the year, obviously referring to team. Derek's over Giannis. But also, I might throw into that. Remember that Io dunk? That, like, game-clinching I.O. dunk yes, against the man. Pacers? I do remember where that. Where he had the ball on the left side. I do remember and that. And was just kind of, like, dribbling. I and then he looks over he at Billy, just... and Billy nodded, like, fucking go. <laughs> and then he just put the ball on the floor and just drove past everyone and it slammed it home. I.O. had a week where he was dunking on every single Oh, my God. Time. Yeah. And it was great because, remember, he was just doing layups and getting them blocked. And we were like, yeah, he's got to fix that. And he was like, oh, I'm fixing that this year. <laughs> I'm doing it now. No, it was amazing, man. Like, honestly, you could really argue they were the most athletic team in the league in, in that first half to see everybody. Oh, look at that dunk. Oh, my God. Yep. Yep, that was the point, Joey. It was like, oh, my God, why am I working here? Oh, there it is. This huge man is crushing Boom. my sternum. <laughs> my God. And that was a, at a moment in oh the my third God, quarter when we Giannis. still thought that the Bulls were going to win that game back yeah. on March 4th. Yeah. That was big, and it was in the third quarter, I believe. Yep. The Bulls nope. had that lead and then mm-hmm. slowly lost it. Kyle, okay. do you have a meathead grade for DJ? I'll go at HP. HP. Highlight player. All right. I, All I, right. Could, I could sit down and watch Derrick Jones Jr. highlights for a long time. Mm. But watching him for games is a different story. <laughs> That's fair. That's very, very fair. That's real right there. <laughs> uh, all right. With our remaining time, we can talk about game one of the conference finals. But before that, just another quick shout out to our friends at Points Bet. If you enjoy CHGO, one way to help us. Continue to grow. Dave loves the rhyme. I do. Uh, is to download that PointsBet app. Use promo code CHGO when you sign up. Not only are you going to get those two risk-free bets, up to $2,000, incredible deal, but if you make a $50 or more first-time deposit when you sign up, you will receive a free membership to CHGO, which unlocks all kinds of incredible content exclusive to our members, like all the amazing writing that Will's doing covering the Bulls, the including his... 
postseason player evaluation columns Ooh. that are paired with these episodes that we're doing. Yes. Mark K, jotting some thoughts. I got a fresh pecking order dropping tomorrow. Trademark. Young Trademark. Kyle. <laughs> Kyle will be writing too. Uh, plus everybody else, all of our yes, credentialed sir. reporters on the beats covering all of your favorite Chicago teams. Plus you're going to get a free CHGO shirt. Anyone you want from the CHGO locker. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll be a five Javante shirt. <laughs> get on it. It's on the way. I already saw Joey DMing the t-shirt guy over in Denver. <laughs> He's We're working on He's it. He's <laughs> uh, and as Dave mentioned before, online sign up now available for Illinois residents. You can create a points bet account from start to finish. Sign up, register, and start making your bets all from your phone. Do it. So what are you waiting for? Once the game starts, don't just bet. Live your Kyle. Live your bet life. But yeah. hey, uh, mm, ready. You That's tried the curveball. That was a no look pass. That's Ooh. right. He tried it. He tried it, and Kyle was ready, man. I wasn't right. muted this time. That's yeah. right. <laughs> Yes. Throwing passes like magic. Mm. Hee hee. <laughs> God, I love when magic makes that noise when he's imitating his passes. <laughs> it's so good. I love you imitating magic, imitating himself, making those So noises. great. It's, it's like good. the uh, the documentary when they're talking about the scrimmage of Monte Carlo mm -hmm. from the 92 mm -hmm. Dream Team. Yeah. And he's like imitating and recreating yeah. a no-look pass he threw. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. And one of the times he goes, hee hee. <laughs> I'm like, I love you, magic. You're so great. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> I'll be hearing that all you day. Know, you know what wasn't great? Tell me. Uh, the Mavs shooting night in game one of the Western Conference Finals. Oh, not Yikes. good at all. Not Yikes. good at all, man. That's what I happens thought that when maybe you have the Mavs would surprise people. In SF. <laughs> hey, this guy. They were ready to write his legend mm. after they saw him drinking that beer. They were ready to write his legend, his that, story it was right just, there. It was just funny. I know, but we they were ready. To, no, we people were the ready pettiness. to write it. He was about to be that dude. Oh, he's dropping 50 tonight. Like, it's going down. Nah. <laughs> nah, not so much. What, what was one impressed me most was Andrew Wiggins. That is what impressed me the most. It's two-way wigs. Yes, man. It, it clicked for him in that game. Like, because he, he played with aggression. And that's been his one knock on him pretty much his whole career. You know, yeah. you remember the Jimmy Butler fiasco. You remember that well. He was a part of that as well. Oh, uh, but that was his one thing was he didn't play with that aggression, man. He just needed for it, it to be honed. You know what I mean? Some guys are just late bloomers on certain things, and he was one of those guys that – I mean, you can't be the number one pick in the draft outside of uh, Bennett. You can't be number one pick in the draft without being, you know, just really, really excellent, being really, really good. So I'm saying all that to say I'm just really proud of him that it would come out of him at some point in time, and he did it in the conference finals, man. It was a great job. The Warriors are just so complete, and when they're locked in, they were not, like, after Ja went down, they were kind of just messing around. They were up 3-1. Yeah. They yeah. just, like, were messing around. When they lock in, they are really freaking good. They're scary. What impressed me the most was Kevon Looney. Ooh. Yeah. Just switching Looney. out on Luka. Yes. And staying in front. Like, yes. he played really well, and that adds another dimension where – you don't have to play Draymond at the five with those pool party lineups all day. Yep. Uh, that, I mean, Steph was awesome. He was rebounding. Um, I was telling you before we started going, like, there was a time where I was like, he's got to have 35 points. And yeah. it was like his 12th point. Yeah. It was just like, oh, my God, this guy just, like, is insane. So yeah, insane, man. But for large good. stretches of the season, Looney was just kind of like a – He's kind of just a, a starter who a wasn't guy. a starter. Mm -hmm. You know, he was the center Keith Bogans of these Warriors. Ooh. But he is really Ooh. good in their system. He understands the way that Steph and Clay and Poole like to move off the ball. True. He's always getting them the ball in their spots. He works the handoff really, really well. True. Um, yeah, I mean, I, they love him. Like, he's going to be a fixture of their lineup yeah. uh, because just he understands their system so well. But. Uh, yeah, I mean, I certainly don't think the Mavs are going to shoot this poorly. I don't think right. this is going to be such a lopsided conference finals. Um, yeah. I still think it's going to be – I think my uh, my guess was Warriors in six. I think that's still still, the thing. still on the table. Okay. Uh, Mavs shot 36 from the field, 23%, 11 oh. of 48 behind the three-point line. And, like I, like, I was watching that game last night, and – We've seen that script play out before mm -hmm. where Luke is doing what he can. Luca himself had a rough shooting night last night. He did. But then when he's driving and coming around screens and spraying out to shooters or finding shooters with ridiculous Luca passes, and it was just brick after brick <laughs> after brick after brick. And you're like, oh, that's, that's a flaw. Yeah. That is a flaw that we have all known about this Dallas Mavericks team all season long. Yeah. When Luca's supporting cast aren't hitting their shots, especially their threes, mm -hmm. they are – a flawed team yeah. that can be beaten by a team like the Warriors, who you said, Will, is just so complete. 
they had seven in double figures, all including all five starters. Every single warrior who started had at least three assists. All five starters had yeah. three or more I mean, assists. The way they scary. move and they move the ball. <laughs> That's scary. Like the Mavs defense has been amazing this year. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's just so difficult to defend a team that moves that much. Yeah. They pick when their clicking, defense apart. It is just impossible. It's yeah. crazy. And so, like, again, I do think that the Mavs will bounce back from a terrible shooting night like this and may, you know, find a way to win a game or two. Or my, my initial prediction was Warriors in seven. Like, mm -hmm. the way that the Mavs have been playing through their first two rounds, I thought they could wouldn't push. Wouldn't surprise me. It they really could wouldn't. push Golden State to seven. But, man, that was just a great reminder to a lot of people who – just because of a couple of down years, an injury to Steph, an injury to Clay, right. Dre being in and out, a cut like a tank season, have just like written the Warriors off right. because of oh Phoenix and sixty four wins and whatever else is going on and all of the hype around John the Grizzlies this year. Yeah. It was like, dude, the Warriors, still the Warriors. Yeah. Can I? This, that good? <laughs> What's up, Kyle? Well done, sir. This, it was weird to see a team try and outshoot the Warriors last night. Mm. Like the Dallas Mavericks shot. 48 three-pointers. Golden State only shot 29. Wow. And now... That's because they're getting wide-open layups every exactly. time. It's crazy. It's just like Dallas, they don't have a true rim protector. And after going through Jaron Jackson Jr. and Steven Adams and right. that right. like forest they have over there in Memphis, mm -hmm. Golden State, they're not going to say, oh, this is easier, but I'm pretty sure it's it's a lovely sight to stroll to the lane and see Maxi Kleber Come on. compared to Jaron Jackson Jr. And Jordan Poole... Ooh. He's getting a bag this summer. Ooh. Like he he just gives them another dynamic ball handler who yeah. could put pressure on the rim beside Steph and Completely they needed agree. that. Another guy that's just bought into that system and fits it perfectly. Yeah, and it's very scary. Like to add on to your point about not having a big man there, not having anybody for Draymond Green that he has to worry about or it concerns itself with. Because once Kleber goes out. What do you do? You know what I'm saying? Because he's the only one that he has to actually come out of the paint for, you know, and they actually guard the three-pointer. And then, you know Draymond's thing. He likes getting that rebound and going. They have nobody to stop that dribble on him. You know what I'm saying? Do anything yeah. like that. So he's at, that's why he looked the way he looked yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the Draymond Green I remember. You know and what the, I'm saying? The adjustment for the Warriors was having Draymond guarding Brunson, mm -hmm. which I thought mm -hmm. was really interesting, allowing him to kind of be that free safety, not having to worry about – Getting out to uh, Kleba, who's been shooting the ball yeah. incredibly well. Um, so I think Kerr coached a fantastic game. They he are did. just they are a handful. They are a handful, man. So how do you guys see game two playing out? Any adjustments from Dallas other than, hey, let's just try to not break all of our threes this time? That's a pretty big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. You know and Make or miss league. Jason Kidd is a great coach. I'm sure he'll have something different set up uh, for them. I don't know who they'll attack. He might start going at Steph a little more in the paint. Uh, Steph is a... Uh, Solid defensively. I don't. I don't think that's talked about enough. That Steph it's is not. solid defensively. He really is. He's been working um, this year. Yeah, man. Seriously, like it's. It's. You look at him. You're like, you're not strong. Like, no, that dude. He's got a. You know, strong base, man. You can't just punk him like that down the paint. So I think they might. They might try that though. They yeah. might try to do that. Um, but. You better give it to Luca, man, and let him go. And Spencer Dinwiddie too. Dinwiddie, like he's, he's got to play who, a role. Who in did this show also. up? I think he had seventeen off the bench yeah, last night. He did. You know, seventeen he did. ain't thirty. Yeah, um, ain't thirty. That's what I mean when I say show up. Right. You know what I mean, he's got to give him that. And, and, and Brunson State, and Finney Smith, like all of the other starters around Luca, had terrible shooting nights. Yeah. So yeah. like Dinwiddie had a decent game. Yeah. But if Luca has a bad game and everybody else has a terrible game, right. they're Like, <laughs> oh well, Dinwiddie's seventeen off the bench means right. we lost by twenty five instead of thirty five. Yeah. Yep, you do. Finney it's Smith like, won't shoot like yeah, that. Yeah, it's again. like the battle of like Brunson and Dinwiddie versus Clay and Poole. Right. And like who's gonna win those? Because you know you know what you're getting from Steph, you know what you're getting from Luca. Um I just yeah, I mean it's another situation as I've talked about before, where like the high end talent, Luca's probably playing at a higher level than Steph right now, arguably. Steph I think is still like right up there. Mm -hmm. But it's what is the depth and the like quality of the second, third depth? Mm -hmm. um, on each team, and I think the Warriors are just way better in that mm -hmm. regard. No yeah, problem. Uh, we'll find Spoken out what happens like in Game 2 uh, tomorrow night. In the meantime, we got um, Celtics Heat Game 2 tonight. The NBA Conference Finals roll on. Yeah. Aren't we all so lucky? We are so lucky right uh, now. And all y'all out there in Bulls Nation are lucky because these guys will be here tomorrow to give y'all one more episode for the week. Mm -hmm. Not me. I'm <laughs> cashing out. Uh, thanks, y'all, for all, as always, for tuning in. We appreciate you. Follow our pal Kyle here on Twitter at K underscore Williams Media. 
Will is at Won't God Leave. Dave's Bow, B A W L Sports on Bulls underscore Peck. We are CHGO underscore Bulls. Shout out and thanks to our pal and producer, Joey. Hey, Joey! We got Sox people hanging out over here. They are there. Let's get, let's get some baseball victories this weekend, shall we? It would be nice. Yeah. It'd be nice, right? I think it'd be a Why thing. Be nice. hey, keep it locked here on your CHGO Sports YouTube channel for more content today and into the weekend. For Joey, Kyle, Will, and Matt, you're Dave. I'm Matt. <laughs> No, I'm at. He's already on vacation. Okay. He's already good, go. guys. He's your new home. He's already good. I told also, you. He's I just realized this. Will, this is the last time we're going to be in studio together. This is true. Yeah, for yeah. a while. For a while. He's going, he's jetting out of Brazil. See you guys. I'm just going to Texas for like three days and then yeah, coming man. back. He's going to Brazil I'll until be, 2035. 2035, yeah. <laughs> See you guys then. I'll be, I'll be on, uh, in my bubble. He'll, He'll be, be in the, in the bubble, little bubble. In bottom, the bottom of your screen. Bottom corner. Yeah. He'll be here. With us, be a beautiful scene. Do you are any uh, Brazilian right fans watching? Hit me up. Yeah. yeah, dude, seriously, hit him up. He he gonna be in, please because I need help spot. with my Portuguese. It's yes. terrible. <laughs> Bulls Nation is strong in Brazil. They are like, really is. and truly. Shout out! Shout out to Felicia. <laughs> he is, Joey, he is not staying with Felicia. He's not allowed. At least I to. hope not. Yeah, he'll be lost. Although you know what, thirty-two mil. He is the man out there, though. You, you gotta assume Felicio's got a pretty dope pad down there. Hey man, he's got Nestle. He was Crunch at the money, Bulls baby. Bucks games. He, he was. was. He sure was. Shout out to Big Chris. Hey man, he's got he's on he's on like Nestle Crunch bars out there, man. <laughs> he's the man. He's the man out there, dog. Thanks for out tuning there. in, Pulse Nation. Tune in for one more episode from us tomorrow, and then have a great weekend. Until next time, see Red be good. <laughs>